welcome to Dream Hello. If you're out there, um, you are tuned in to another Master Monkey presentation. Uh, today on the roster is uh, Beat Grinder. This is, excuse me a moment. Sorry about that. This is the uh, Master Monkey equivalent of a uh, production show. So uh, rather than just being all beats and all or all drones like my other shows, um, in this one we, we talk a bit more usually, and uh, we're actually assembling bit uh, beats and samples and things like that. Uh, I've moved the mic, actually, if, uh, if anyone's out there and they don't like the sound of the mic now, or uh, let me know, I'll move it back or something. I think I'm probably leaning into it a bit too, and I'm hoping I don't have to do that. So uh, let me know how the sound is on that. One thing, uh, oh hey, it's a Hip Hop Hobby Club. Hey, how's it going, man? Welcome back. and. Uh, I'm rolling up my sleeves here because uh, I wanted to say before we get into uh, what I had planned, we were going to do some like uh, digital digging and stuff. Frankly, I just really got to get some new uh, samples in here. Um, so we're going to do some of that. But you know what? I actually actually haven't practiced yet uh, today. Yes, finger drummers practice. And so if you guys don't mind, um, I think I'm going to spend a little while just pounding away on the uh, 404 and. I'll give people some time to come in if they want, and uh, and then uh, maybe in uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so, we'll come back and uh, talk about some of this gear and maybe uh, dig around the internet for some weird sounds. It'll be fun, so stick around. Uh, stick around. Welcome, everybody, and uh, hope you uh, have a good time. Take care. Master Monkey.
to uh, put the headphones on. It's really hot here in the studio, by the way. That's why I don't have headphones on today. It's like 100 or something. Uh, that last bit there would have been more appropriate, I think, for the uh, drone show. This little bit here with these horns. I've been playing with that for a while, actually, which is not my usual uh, methodology. Uh, kind of fiddling with the same samples for a while. I think I'm coming up with like a, a song, I might call it. I don't know. I've never called anything a song before. But uh, some combination of these three with that conversation there. If you recall, we got that actually on the show the other night. We took it from a um, 1960s documentary called uh, Future Home by uh, GE and a bunch of other weird people from the 60s. Some, some weird background sounds and some musical bits. Anyways, uh, so that was fun, and I had a good time drumming. Uh, if it's your first time tuning in, uh, excuse me a moment. Sorry about that. If it's your first uh, first time tuning in, uh, you might not uh, uh, might not be familiar with all of this. I'm going to do a quick review for uh, repeat viewers. I hope you'll uh, you'll bear with us because I know this is a review for you. But um, all this stuff here is manual. It's all I'm all analog. There's no MIDI. There's no uh, computers. There's no DAW. There's no nothing. I'll show you guys the back of this for you sound and gear geeks out there. We got the power. We got the uh, line in from which we sample stuff. We got the line out, which goes straight to the uh, multi-track recorder. If you're curious, it's a Tascam DP008EX. It's one of those little tiny battery-powered Tascams. Uh, I love those. As I say, <coughs> excuse me. the other name for this show is the loudest battery-powered show on Earth. Wow, I really mastered that thing there. Um, and the, uh, it's all, it, it's all well, it's not battery powered at the moment, but it surely could be. And the point here is that we make, we make stuff with the simplest, uh, well, very simple gear at least. We don't get caught up in technology and stuff. We're, we're here to make sound. If you uh, like to call it music, that's cool. I'm cool with that terminology. But if you want to call it noise, that's cool too. It doesn't bother me. Uh, sometimes we make beats or beatish type stuff. Sometimes it's drone-ish type stuff. But in the end, it's all Master Monkey. And I hope you dig it like I do. Um, I haven't covered why we're doing this. What is the stream? It's kind of weird because actually the stream is a replacement for my broken tape recorder. What do I mean by that? Hello. I'm going to get Welcome. some background music because I'm boring myself here. Walking up there we go. I uh, hope repeat viewers will, apo will uh, I apologize for that. This is not the going away music. Usually we play this when we're going away. But uh, this is just background music for the moment. Um... I don't, I don't like the mic over there. I keep leaning into it. Hold on a second, you guys. I'm going to bring it back here. So, uh, this is a replacement for my broken tape recorder. Uh, 
<laughs> I used to do this on my own. I've been doing this for many years. I don't know, 10, 15 years, maybe longer. Um, I've just been uh, wailing away on different stuff in my in my studio here. I also paint, so sound is just one of my types of expression. Um, I've got piles of tapes and stuff and uh, mini discs. After my tape player broke, I switched to mini discs, and then that that broke. Um, and I didn't have anything to record on anymore. Um, but when I stream, uh, it goes straight to uh, the stream, and then I can export it to YouTube. And now I have all my stuff on uh, to record it. So this is a great replacement for my tape, and I found it other people actually enjoy it, and you enjoy it. Maybe I, I should have shared the other 10 years' worth of experimentation, but nonetheless, here we are. So back to the process. Uh, my process, my regular production process, is uh, to take the... Uh, uh, take sounds, play with them with my gear for a while, I record it uh, live, and then I pick out the good parts, and that's what I release. Um, so this is, you're just sort of spying in on my regular production process. Uh, it is a live performance because that's how I, I do things. I record myself in a live performance. Uh, you can check myself out, uh, stuff out on uh, YouTube, find it over there, Master Monkey, and Die Master Monkey, SoundCloud, various places, and uh, all of these uh, sessions, all of these streams, uh, more or less, sometimes in edited form, end up on YouTube. Today, on the roster, we don't usually talk this much. It's usually non-stop beats. In fact, usually people complain that I, I don't interact. I just pound on the, the devices. Uh, but today is a special show. It's Beat Grinder. Uh, this is the Master Monkey equivalent of a production show. Look, we even have an agenda. Uh, the agenda today is a quick gear overview, which I've done almost none of, and um, and uh, then we're going to go uh, digital digging, which means we we go uh, rip off sounds from the internet and YouTube, which eventually become Master Monkey material. Uh, by the way, a big shout out to all of my uh, viewers. Uh, this whole thing has become like a whole thing. Like I said, this was just a a way of uh, recording my uh, material, and uh, now Master Monkeys kind of become like a thing. So, anyways, I noticed the levels are kind of over here. Sorry about that. Let me adjust these levels. Somebody was asking about my mixer the other day. It's, it's just a multi-track recorder. You guys get the left channel. I get the right channel. Lo-fi is all mono. That's how we do things in lo-fi field. Back to the quick gear review. Um, we got a Casio SK-1 up here. A bit of this covered up by the screens up there. Sorry about that. We use it, actually use it, quite often, surprisingly often, um, for all kinds of stuff that makes crazy sounds. It's not modified. I do have circuit bent instruments, and I use them on the show. This is not one of them. I use it as is, shipped from the factory, and uh, it does great stuff. Oh, there's a sample sitting in there right now that we just a few minutes ago got from... Um, where did we get it? I think I took it off the, the other sampler. So we bounce stuff between the samplers sometimes. So it's got something in there right now. Uh, it's a very simple device. Maybe one day we'll do a special show on it because it really can do incredible things. Uh, okay. Good Next up, the, uh, to Master Monkey. Thank you. the SP202. Uh, again, as... Uh, Walking up and down, I'm sorry, guys, i got to have whole music or background sound there. As you see also, no many purists out there. I'm the purest of the purists, trust me. I'm very insistent. Power supply, uh, audio in, audio out. That's it. Um, you'll note that it still have the, has the buttons, unlike my 404. Uh, it still has the numbers on the pads. My 404, the numbers are worn off. You might wonder why that is. Stick around the show, you'll find out. <laughs> The 202, why are the numbers still there? Well, there's a very good reason. You can't really use the 202 in the same way as you would use a 404. It has very limited polyphony. This means how many different sounds it can make at the same time. Right now, it's making two sounds. I believe if we turn a third sound on, yes, you'll note the flute has stopped because it, it turned off the first sound. <laughs> this is a very bad thing to happen in a performance. You don't want that in a live performance scenario. So. When you have a 202 and you use it in the way I use these things, live performance, you uh, become very conservative with the way you use it. You use no more than two pads at once, and you don't go wailing on it like I do with this 404. You can't do that. Because <laughs> if you accidentally hit two at once, you'll shut off the flute. 
So, uh, but we do use it for all kinds of wild stuff like this. You can still move from one thing to another, and there's all kinds of crazy tricks. And you'll see them all on the show. If you stick around, which I recommend you do. Uh, I've had the 202. Uh, this is, Jesus, it's the first musical type thing I bought. It is. It's, I've had it for a long time, the original owner. And we'll just leave it at that. Uh, these are hard to find. It's kind of a lo-fi classic. If you uh, run into one, you should pick it up. Especially if you're into lo-fi and underground hip-hop beats, all that stuff. You might not believe it, but this is really where everything starts. You have this much bigger brother, the SP-404, next to it. I only got it in August. On August 19th, actually, I got it. So if you're wondering, hey, how come this guy uses his 404 kind of like a 202? Uh, that's why. So I've been using a 202 for a decade, and I'm still new to the 404. It's the biggest thing for me is just getting used to the fact that I can play more than two pads at once um, without, you know, endangering the sound. Uh, um, the other thing is... Uh, the pads, I think they're bigger. Yeah, they're bigger and they're easier for me to drum on, finger drum. You, you might have seen people doing that, finger drumming on like a machine or some other pads. NPCs is the big thing. What you haven't seen is someone do it on these teensy tiny 404 pads. Why am I doing that? Well, because I'm really attached to the 404 and the SP series and stuff and I, I wanted to be able to do everything just on the one place because I'm a performance guy. Anyways, you'll see why it is true that I am the fastest 404 in the world. If you don't believe it, come in here to the chat and challenge me. I'm not talking to you, Ben, because we already spoke. I'm talking to the other ones out there. I don't know. There are other fingers out, finger drummers out there, but uh, none of them like me. So, tune in, yeah, you'll see lots of that. Actually, let's do some of that. If there's new people watching, they might not know. Does this guy just talk? Because, man, that's boring. I don't turn into those shows either myself. Says music. Oh, I didn't finish the gear review. You guys got to help me because I'm really kind of like, I'm one of those. Yeah, I'll get all distracted. All right. Let's, oops, I bumped the camera. Sorry about that. And next we have, we have the girl with no name. She's one of the standard uh, guests on the show. She's like our Ed McMahon. Either her or you know it's coming. Cowboy Mike is the guy that reminds us not to clear our throat on the microphone and other bad things that we shouldn't do on the microphone like curse. <laughs> uh, so, the girl with no name, Cowboy Mike. Meet our new viewers if we have any, or none, if we have none. It doesn't matter. We're doing this anyways, like I said. I've been doing this for 10 years and no one was listening. This is a, an Arturia micro -root. I'm going to, excuse me, girl with no name. Oh, I've been waiting for someone to come in and suggest a name for her, a nice name. If you got a nice name for the girl with no name, come in the chat or send me a message on Twitch or Twitter or wherever. And you'll be the person that gave her the name. This is an Arturia micro -root. It's a little, cute little analog mono synth. Um, it's not my first synth. I've had lots of synths. I've had a JP8000. I've had a, 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 a CZ01. I had a Yamaha CS1X. Uh, a bunch of stuff. Yeah, the 8000 was a beast. If you're out there, low 8000, that's a monster. Yeah, it was a monster. Um, this thing's a monster too. I'm, I'm telling you, I haven't tuned it yet. Oh, it's live. Um, I haven't tuned it yet. It's an analog synth. Uh, analog synths. And we go quick lessons. I'm going to turn off the sound and we're going to get serious about music production. Crap here. I almost cussed again. Thank you, Cowboy Mike. Um, it's getting a little crowded over there. Okay, so we're going to do some actual studio work here. A uh, analog synth has to be tuned. I don't know if you guys know this. But uh, they change with the temperature and stuff like that. And uh, so I'm going to tune this sucker. Um, we're going to set all the envelopes off. We're going to set it to the simplest possible waveform. We'll talk about the brute in a little bit. I got these both at the same time. <coughs> Cowboy Mike's giving me a dirty look there. I got these both at the same time, August 19th, uh, the 404 and the micro brute birthday gift. And, um, okay, there's a nice clean tone. We're going to tune to an A here. Classic keyboardist trick there. 
we just stick a little piece of folded up paper and it's like we have an extra hand okay there's a little tuning pot a potentiometer back here on the back try not to touch it because the sucker is sensitive and uh, I have to stop talking for a second because my 404, I'm uh, sorry, the uh, Tascam, the multi-track, has a built-in tuner. It's nice. I just hit this thing. So let's be quiet for a moment, everyone, and we'll find out if we're in tune. We're a little flat. I've been pretty impressed with how well this thing maintains, uh, it's tuned across the keys. Very, very good. That's like three octaves. Suck it so perfectly in tune. That's that's really good, by the way, if you're a synth guy and you're out there. Um, really stable circuitry in this sucker. I think it's because it's so simple. The designer, Johan, I can't remember his last name. Johan's really a DIY synth genius. This thing's a real piece of work. Uh, I'm going to mess around with it for a little while, just in case you guys maybe you haven't seen one before and your curiosity's picked and you're like, what the hell can that thing do? If you watch the knobs, uh, as I say, I'm not new to synths, but I am new to the brute, so I'll try to give you guys a little show around of it. Let's see if I can plan ahead what I'm going to do. I might show you some different oscillators. I'll mess around with the filters and I'll show that they self-resonate, which you totally expect. I doubt we're going to mess with the patch bay. That's a whole thing. Uh, probably screw with the LFO. I know you want to see if that self-resonates, which it does like a monster. And uh, the probably play with the keyboard tracking and envelope, uh, which are hell of fun. We're not going to get into the arpeggiator sequencer thing. Uh, okay, some quick Arturia microbrew demo. Uh, I might even add some shit back here. From Darn! Where were you, Cowboy Mike? Where were you? I might even add some stuff uh, from over here just so we're not listening to the synth alone. By the way, all this stuff is uh, open source, man. That's how I am about this. Uh, if you got a sampler out there, hit record anything uh, you like. It's yours, man. Feet, brothers. All right. Let's make noise. I have to disclaim that that is Master Monkey we're listening to, so you know we don't do loops here. We don't do sample libraries here, and that's a Master Monkey loop, so.
you know so we like anything that can give us like a something where you go what the heck is that and you're going to make a whole track out of it you're going to use a piece of it and when people hear it in your track they're going to go what and that's exactly what we want so I sampled some of that I think while we were if you were watching uh, that's going to come in handy later we're going to use it all kinds of different ways we got two sides forward and backwards there's a sampler trick for you Actually, each of these samples is two samples, right? The forward sample and the backwards. The backwards sample. Get it? I think that's enough on that. You guys want to hear some drums? I know some of you guys are into drums. What I like to do sometimes, and it's not because I can't play keyboards. By the way, I can't play keyboards. Not really well, but okay. That should be obvious, actually, if you see my finger drumming. But the thing is, I play them with my right hand, and I drum with my right hand, so I'm running out of hands. I don't know. I'm trying to learn how to do keyboards with my left hand, or I don't know, figure something out. So most of the times when you guys see the synth or the keyboards used, they're usually fairly simplistic, minimal, or whatever. Or this sort of thing, you know, with the sticking this in there. Hold down a note, set the LFO on, and use the LFO as a rhythm, sort of. This becomes our rhythm. That's what we do. And we can mess with it like this, or whenever we do these kinds of things and not have to, because our right hand's busy, right? So, that's pretty standard, by the way. I didn't have that. This is a standard uh, techno technique, or whatever. Electronic music technique. Usually used with this kind of LFO waveform. That way you get that effect. Uh, by the way, while we're at it, I'm going to show you guys this cool thing, what you can do with the uh, sequencer. There's a pattern sequencer on the microboot. It's not really a sequencer. It's more like an arpeggiator, I guess, maybe. Uh, anyways, I got one in here. Let's go see what we got. or something and it just repeats over and over anyway so 
thing is you change the rate of that with it going through that playback with this button here this knob so you turn this knob it goes faster pattern goes faster turn it down it goes slower and you guys know how this works this is for some of you guys i know already know since and all these features so some of this is for people who don't know um noobs welcome noobs uh sequencer thing so but here's the thing uh you can tie the lfo i'm pointing to it over here you can tie the lfo to the sequencer rate so right now when i turn it faster it just goes faster it ignores the bpm rate that we've set over here but if you tie it to the sequencer you flip this switch up it goes like you know now you'll see the lights are flashing in order so the lfo is going at the same rate as the sequencer so let's turn the sequencer off for a second. We'll rem remind ourselves what the LFO is busy doing. It's doing... Uh, okay, it's doing that. On, off, on, off, on, off, right? Now if I tie it to the sequencer, um, when I change the sequencer rate, the speed of the LFO changes. But you see, it, it stays in time with the sequencer, so it's like some multiple of the sequencer. So the cool part about this is, it, you can set this to like, say, double like this, and the sequencer on, and you got that. Now if you use your actual sequencer pattern with the LFO going, so you see it sounds like there's a lot more going on there than there really is it's really just what four notes and but it's being chopped up by the lfo so that's kind of a cool thing and the cool part is you can do this with one hand while your, your other hand's busy so you can do this Makes it sounds like uh, makes it sound like the the party is getting more complicated, even though it's it's not. You're just moving this one mod wheel. So there's a trick for you synth people, or if you're new to the microboot, it's actually pretty standard LFO versus a uh, arpeggiator, LFO versus sequencer sort of thing. Okay, uh, I said we were going to make some drums, and we're going to, but um, I think I'm due for my like five minute break. I'm going to play some stuff for you though. You might have heard it. If you haven't, you should go on YouTube, check it out. The trash bag tapes is what it's called. I'm sorry for repeat viewers. Uh, might have heard it before. Actually, you all heard it before because we recorded it live here on the show. Like I said, the whole thing's live. If it's your first time tuning in, you're like, is this guy a talker? No, usually I'm totally silent. In fact, many viewers get rather upset. They come in, they say hi. I'm just staring down at the gear and pounding away on it. Today is Beat Grinder, which is a special show wherein uh, we talk <laughs> and uh, also make noise. So if you uh, want to interact, come into the chat. That'd be cool. In the meantime, I'm going to play you uh, a few minutes of the trash bag tapes, and I'll be back in five. And we're going to pound away on some stuff. You guys are going to see some finger drumming you've never seen before. And then we're going to go uh, digital digging for new samples. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. <laughs> 
Big Sound. will forgive that little replay of the trash bag tape. I should save that for Drum Somnia or something. Um, yeah, trash bag tapes, check it out on YouTube, all recorded live right here on the show. And uh, thanks a lot for you guys for tuning in for all of that because um, this has really helped my working methodology. Yeah, that's enough blab about art. I'm getting sick of that. Aren't you sick of that girl with no name? I was saying, uh, send me a message on Twitch or in the chat or on Twitter or wherever else you find Die Master Monkey, Master Monkey Must Die, etc., etc., and uh, tell me what we should call the girl with no name. And it better be nice. Okay. I said we are going to go uh, digital digging, internet digging. And that's what we're going to do. Let me make some room here. Excuse me, Cole with no name. We're going to make some room for my internet sample library. <laughs> um, as I said before, we don't use sample libraries here on the Master Monkey show. There's a bunch of prima donna reasons for that. And uh, mostly has to do with the, we want to be original, and we want to make good art. Good art should be new, and um, if it's a good beat, if I downloaded a good beat and I made a good beat out of it, what have I done? Nothing at all. So, 
we are going to make beats and other stuff, at least noise, out of garbage, trash. That's how we do things here. We make art from trash. Um, okay, where was I? And uh, we're looking for some empty banks <laughs> on the sampler, and they're all filled up. Actually, what we usually do is go through and delete some crap, so let's do that. Okay, what we got here on the first bank? Oh, I want a reminder, uh, new new viewers, if you're new, we don't usually talk on this show. There's usually no talk. It's all sound. Um, tune in to one of the other shows if you can't stand the talking. Today's the uh, Master Monkey version of a production show, like the other shows where they're um, working in their DAW, except we don't use DAWs here. Everything's analog, and we like it that way. So um, our version of a production show is getting sounds into the sampler, picking things out, messing around with them, uh, exploring new ideas, etc., etc. If you are a new viewer and uh, you really want to see something cool like beats or something, uh, just drop in the chat and say, hey man, I've never, I've never heard you before. Play something. And we'll do that. And you'll be surprised because it's weird. Right now we're deleting stuff. We're looking for stuff to delete. That's gone. Oops. Whatever that is. Oh my goodness. That's really loud. Okay. That's gone. These levels are low. Okay. Um, I think we've used these all up. You guys remember this sample? used it a lot. <laughs> it's on like three, wow. three of my videos on YouTube. It's, uh, who is that? It's a French jazz singer from the 40s. Edith Piaf. It's Edith Piaf, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't know what happened to my drums on these channels. Um, I've heard that the 404 is occasionally afflicted with a problem that causes it to lose samples. I haven't observed this effect in person yet. Um, maybe I just have. Yeah, that's not... There should be something on there. I guess there is. I'm not hearing it. One moment for a while. I'm going off mic for a while, you guys, while I seriously commit to maintaining this thing.
Audiovisual lessons. 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 You know what we're going to do is that one with the uh, audiovisual lesson. We're going to move it back to that one with the bits from the thing I'm calling Future Home. That's this thing. If you've been on the show, you've been like, hey man, I've heard that before. What's up with that? I thought the Master Monkey show, you never see the same thing twice. Which is usually true. I don't know why I'm keeping these ones on these pads. I think we're making a song. Well, that's weird, huh? Anyways, the routine goes something like a bunch of crazy drum improv and then this routine here. And then every once in a while we do that. And we stop the drums. And it's kind of cool and you can bring the drums back in with like a bah, 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 which I love to do, you know. You guys know that. Man, I way overuse that. It's just so much fun. I love drums. Um, uh, so where are we? Oh, I got distracted by drums again. All right, we were going digging. Oh, and then I had to clear up some pads, which we did. As you notice, I think it's true. And you know, I, I think this SP404 sometimes glitches samples. Some of these pads just weren't making any sound at all. So I was like, screw it, we'll delete them. Anyways, we, we live with chaos here, we? Chaos is part of the process here at Master Monkey. Uh, the classic backwards kick is always classic. To maintain these and hundreds of complex I think we're going to keep that still. Oh, right, so where's that? Oh, there's nowhere to put the thing. This is the future home pad here. We're in section A, and it's all full of future home stuff. To maintain these and hundreds of complex electronics. I might be able to, you know, we're going to swap that for the. Audio visual. For that guy. We're going to swap audio for audio visual lesson. Audio. That thing's great. By the way, I. I do hear, if you're a producer or whatever out there, you're into sound, which is cool. I take sound, obviously. We're all into sound. 
Yes, I do hear that high-pitched hum in the top of that sample. Audio-visual lessons. You hear that? Audio-visual lessons. Yeah, it's something we're going to have to deal with. I'll probably use a filter on it. Audio-visual lessons. Audio-visual lessons. There we go, it's gone. Um, the thing with the 404, though, is, I mean, it's got all these filters and stuff, but you either apply them just to this one pad, Audio and then it doesn't apply to this pad, or if you apply to all pads. Audio. Both of them are fun. Um, but what you can't have is uh, it's applied to a filter on this pad and then something else on another pad, and you can't have that. So I am still pretty conservative with how I use those sorts of features. I just play the samples straight out, and my mutilation of them mostly comes down to how I use them. Um, but in this case, we're going to need it. Audio visual lessons. Audio visual lessons. Audio visual lessons. There we go. It's in. It's somewhere in the higher part of the frequency, maybe thirteen, fifteen hundred. You guys think? Um, fifty, a thousand, fifteen k, maybe twelve, fifteen k, somewhere up in the buzz zone of sound. Uh, high pitch sound, the ones that piss off dogs. <laughs> ah, Cowboy Mike, where are you? Damn it, we used the P word. I don't really have anything against or for any words. <laughs> I just uh, don't want to have to go through my YouTube videos and be like Mark the Adult and stuff. It's a pain in the butt. Anyways, Cowboy Mike, that's not a good one either. I'm going to put him here where I can see him. So I don't forget. No cursing on the mic. Okay. Excuse me. Um, where were we? Oh, we're deleting stuff. Uh, yeah, I was surprised to find that. Uh, yeah, apparently, it's true. Samplers do. Uh, this sampler does occasionally screw up pads, but that's all right because we love chaos here. Audio visual less. Audio visual. Yeah. We're not going to resample it in the box because uh, it's would we would descend into tedium and then we lose the creative energy and the spark and that's why we don't use DAWs here. That's why we don't use MIDI. Um, also I'm bored with any pattern after about like two repetitions I already want to move on. I know you guys are sick of that sample but there's something I want to use it for. It's kind of melancholy and stuff. To maintain the This is, I wish this was, I wish that was louder. I don't know what it is, but it's just incredible. Let's listen to it for a little while. If you're into sound, you'll love this thing. It also has the same uh, high pitch squeal, I think. Must come from the same commercial. results are crap, which they surely aren't. Even if the results are crap, we have a lot of fun. And that's the point. I mean, if we're not having fun, screw this. Uh, no, Cowboy Mike, screw is, screw is okay. A screw is a piece of hardware. In more ways than one. <laughs> Innuendo. Warning. Okay, we're going to play it forward and find out what the heck this thing was. I suspect it's from that future home documentary we were playing with the other night on the show.
that's it. That's the whole thing. Actually, it sounds pretty good forward, too, so I feel a little guilty about that now. I mean, if it sounds good forward and I turn it backwards and it still sounds good, what have I done? Yes, we are prima donnas here. <laughs> Anyways, it just sounds so awesome, right? When it drops into that second part and it, it gets that low rumble, that's the bass kicking in. We're actually dropping out because we're playing it backwards. But um, the result is a kind of inbuilt rhythm that's subtle, so you can still mess around on top of it. I'll show you what I mean. Excuse me. Give him 007. Oh, we, we can't use this. This is all over the trash tape already. It's already been used. We need new shit. Oh, Cowboy Mike, you're fired. I might get some new drums in here. It's just um, it's boring for you guys to watch that process on the show. If you're curious... Uh, I'll, I'll pick drums out of like uh, Caustic, which is an Android app, probably iPhone also. I'll just get drums out of there. Single drums. Not a loop. Okay, you, uh, <laughs> you lazy slot sods out there. You know, you know who I'm talking to. You do not just steal a whole, a whole bunch of rhythm. Anyway, so enough of that. So I usually take these right off of Caustic or something. I'll just take one beat the one hit, or uh, sometimes off of, um, I'm going to give you guys a little secret, DJs and stuff if you're listening, we might do this later, you know there's those CDs on uh, Google Play and stuff, not the sample libraries, I mean not the uh, loop libraries at least, I don't do those, those are crap, but you know the sample libraries where they have a really high quality sample of like an 808 or something like that, um, or a, you know, 66, whatever, classic drum. Uh, MT-186 up in Skirner Island with Casio drum machines and shit. Cowboy Mike. Um, so, uh, yeah. Go on Google Play. You don't have to buy the CDs because the preview <laughs> is three seconds long and that's all you need, right? That's the whole drum sample is one hit. It's only 1.5 seconds anyways. Or less. So, uh, Mark, just put all those sample CDs in your shopping cart your wish list, and when you need them, you just hit the preview thing, it runs through all of the drum hits, you can sample them all on your sampler, and they're super high quality, and they're free, so, anyways, uh, no, there's a couple of little tips there I gave today, that's cool, this is turning into like a real music production show, with the one exception that we don't make music on this show, <laughs> we make noise mostly, um, Okay, and we're going digging. I swear, we're really going to go digging now. If you've been here over the last few uh, shows, you've seen that we've been going through uh, a set of s really stupid commercials from the 60s. That's where a lot of this crap has been coming from. And uh, we have not even gotten a few minutes into it. And this is, we've like already produced several tracks out of it. And uh, the trash tapes made exclusively from, almost exclusively from stuff on this commercials. If you're interested, it's nothing special. It's in YouTube. It's called Vintage 50s and 60s TV Commercials. 
And these things are just full, full of gems that no one's ever heard, and no one's tapped. That's the important part, you guys, right? If you're out there, music producers, this is stuff that ain't been tapped. I mean, what's the point in sounding like, I mean, yeah, Wu-Tang's awesome, but what's the point in sounding like it? It's been done. Do something new. Get out there and hit the stuff that no one's hit. And uh, so, uh, we're going to play with this stuff. And while, you, while we do that, you'll see that I'll be playing with the... I'll be recording the samples. You'll also notice, if you may have noticed this on the show before, I'll usually put, be putting a little English on them, like with the filters or something, so that, yes, literally, as we bring the sample in, we'll be screwing it up. So we, we will be guaranteeing that we do not sound exactly like it, anything else. Uh, so that's intentional, by the way, you guys, and I recommend you do that. There might be a sampler guys going out there, well, you could resample it in the box, but... Uh, we don't do that because this is an irreversible process this way, and I can't convince myself to wuss out. <laughs> so we take screwed up samples in, and we guarantee that we have to work with them. It's a process, people. Art production process. Here we go. Let's have some fun. I guess we all agree on sugar smacks. Right. right. Folks, don't wait. Get Kellogg's new sugar smacks. They're better than ever. Puffs of wheat, sugar toasted, and candy sweet. You bet. Just get Kellogg's sugar smacks, brand new. A Northwest Mountie, and he's been trailing this desperate character for three years. And I'm tired. Uh, well, it's him or me. And candy sweets. You bet. Just get Kellogg Sugar Smacks. Brand new. A Northwest Mountie. And he's been trailing this desperate character for three years. And I'm tired. Uh, well, it's him or me. Uh-oh. He's got an aching head, an upset stomach, and an empty gun. What you need is some Alka-Seltzer. You know what they always say. Yeah, a Mountie always gets his man. Oh, no. I mean about Alka-Seltzer. Relief is just a swallow away. Well. Down, 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 the stomach through. Round, 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 the system too. A swallow away. Well. A swallow away. Well. Down, 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 the stomach through. Round, 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 the system too. Down, 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 the stomach through. Round, 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 the system too. Wish me a system, my, my, my. Ooh, so much, so much, my, my. Wish me a system, my, my, my. Ooh, so much, so much, my, my. A Northwest Mountie, and he's been trailing this desperate character. There's the best, the best chocolate flavor you ever had. Now, Bosco Magic. Cake, ice cream, chocolate extra thick, extra chocolatey, Bosco syrup. <laughs> Bosco also makes milk chocolatey delicious. Tell Mom to get Bosco chocolate flavor syrup for you. Sing out. I love Bosco. It's rich in chocolate tea. Chocolate flavored Bosco is mighty good for me. Mama puts it in my milk for extra energy. Bosco gives me iron and sunshine vitamin D. Oh. 
Don't forget Tootsie Roll Puffs come in a party pop too. Ten pops in a party play play. There's a game on the back that's lots of fun to do. Who's the kid in the neighborhood? The Tootsie Roll Puffs are triple good. Triple good. You'll love Tootsie Roll Puffs. Hi, I'm Mike Reynolds. With a sensational shortening discovery of a bit of bacon and fries. It's Procter and Gamble's Golden Fluffle, the first all-new shortening in 40 years. It's rich. Its color is golden yellow. And what a pie it makes. Richer looking, better tasting, more appetizing. But let's hear what Mrs. Felda Styra, Indiana State Fair baking champion, had to say about <laughs> Rich and looking, better tasting, more appetizing results in everything you bake or fry. Get golden fluffle. Sandwich, Swiss cream sandwich baked by Nabisco. The luscious, creamy fillings in a crust by itself. No other like it. And these tempting banana cookies are so light they melt in your mouth. better in every way, because in every way, it's a better cigarette. Good, huh? Yes, for a treat instead of a treat, and get a pack or get a carton of old gold cigarettes. Right now, this is Dennis James reminding you to keep smoking old gold cigarettes. Thanks. Attention. To help carry one of our important work, I want you to join the secret squadron and wear this official badge and have this secret victory. <laughs> Following each week's adventure, I'll send an important secret message, and only secret squadron members who have the coding can decode them. Also, later I'll tell you the simple rules for joining the secret squadron, but you must promise to do as I do. Keep with my toys and win your way out. And drink over to you every day. It's the official drink of the Secret Squadron. We hope it's Squadron members well. Cross your flavor or the two. What's your heart that we need for you? Rapid power. Yes, jump with the rapid head. One, three, four. Over two can add the kind of nourishment so important for a rocket power. We drink Ovaltine hot for breakfast. Mmm, good too. And cold for lunch and between meal snacks. And hot again at bedtime to help keep us revved up with rocket power. Believe me, Ovaltine's got what it takes to help you. So a great best of Ovaltine. Every day. The Gemini Space Flights. Training is hard, like this spacewalk practice. But the astronauts do some things you do. In space, they can time. But what's the practice of a large Leave it. 
Wolverine. Warped with flavored syrup. Bosco. A watch. Take ice cream. Magic. With the extra good chocolate flavored syrup. Bosco. A watch. Take ice cream. Spoon on extra room. Bosco syrup. There's the best chunk of the chocolate. Bosco syrup. Bosco also makes milk chocolate delicious. Tell mom. Tell mom to get Bosco chocolate syrup for you. Cake, ice cream, Stomach brew, round, round, round. Without the filter, they always say. Face. Rowdy always gets his man. Oh no, I need a ball of alkazolter. Rip this joke. Go away. Well. Down, 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 the stomach brew. Rip this joke! Go away! Rip this joke! 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 Go away! Rip this joke! Rip this joke! Rip this joke! Rip this Rip this joke! Go away! Rip this joke! Rip this joke! Rip this joke! Go away! Rip this joke! Rip this joke! Rip this joke! Go away! Rip this Okay, if you've been watching, you've, you've seen the entire Master Monkey production process. That is the whole thing. Uh, actually, that's not, that's not true. This is half of the process. This is the preparation process and the exploration process. The production process is in the other shows. Uh, any other time you tune in, aside of this 3 p.m. Wednesday beat grinder show, it's a special show when we do the music production part of the process. All other shows are straight out performance the whole time. And uh, this is where the material comes from. And uh, then we perform it during the shows. I record it live. And it goes pretty much straight to YouTube, usually um, unedited after that, straight out. So it's a performance thing. I hope you guys like it a lot. Had a really good time today, and I think we're going to. We're going to get a lot out of these, uh, what the heck was it anyways? Round, round, round. Alka-Seltzer. Thank you, Alka-Seltzer. Not an official sponsor, but uh, has really contributed to the Master Monkey Show. If you come back to the other shows, you're going to hear these samples, but you will not recognize them. Maybe the... Maybe that one, because you just heard it a bit, but yeah, these, so these are going to get further mutilated, and we'll figure out how to play each of the sounds as if they were an instrument in themselves. That's what we're really doing here. I think you probably got the gist of that already by now, and uh, pretty much worn out. Wow. I think I might do a little bit of finger drumming for you guys, just for the heck of it. It is really hot in here, and to tell the truth, the pads are actually slippery, which is... Uh, little detriment but I might do a little bit of that to close out the show and uh, if you're new I really appreciate you coming in and I suggest you subscribe because I do lots of unscheduled shows too uh, the next scheduled show is I think uh, what is it Wednesday Friday Friday nights 10 o'clock uh, the loudest battery powered show on earth <laughs> don't be impressed we've been practicing that for weeks now <laughs> so Thanks a lot for showing up, you guys, and uh, I think I'm going to close this out with some finger drumming. Hope you enjoy it, and stay cool.